Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this podcast, I'm going to talk about aposematic coloration, or another way to say that is warning coloration. So basically, when we look at a blue ring octopus or a flamboyant cuttlefish or a poison dart frog, they're telling us, stay away. I'm dangerous. I'm poisonous. And so they're just warning, uh, warning us of, of possible danger, and we start to associate that color with that danger. And so as, as living predators, we tend to avoid things that are brightly colored. Now, if you look at this, Wilson's Bird of Paradise, this is not colorful because it's toxic or poisonous. Uh, and in fact, Darwin was the first one to figure out that it's sexual selection that's accounting for this beautiful coloration in this male bird of paradise. Um, but the other person who came up with the idea of natural selection, Alfred Wallace, remember uh, about 30 years after Darwin, uh, he suggested that when you have things like this, things like these hornets right here, basically what they're doing is they're, they have this bright coloration because they're warning that they um, are poisonous, that they could sting you and cause damage to you. And so sometimes it doesn't mean that you're going to die from things that are brightly colored. Like a ladybug, if you were to eat one, they taste awful. Same thing with a tiger moth or even a skunk. They're just reminding you by being brightly colored that something's not right. Something's going to be awful. And you start to associate that once you start that. Um, try to eat one of those things. Or if we look at a black widow spider, um, this red coloration is telling you that they actually are poisonous. You could die. And a velvet ant, which if I remember right, is actually a wasp, even though it looks like an ant. This coloration is telling you that they're really, really dangerous. Or a puffer fish, the same way that flamboyant color says stay away. And so once you have poison, once you have this coloration out in nature, then nature starts to play with that. And what I mean is that this right here is a coral snake, and this right here is a milk snake. This coral snake is incredibly dangerous. If it were to bite you, uh, it has a neurotoxin. The milk snake can do nothing to you. And so what I'm talking about is mimicry. And in fact, there's a saying, if red touches yellow, you're a dead fellow. If red touches black, you're OK, Jack, um, to kind of tell the difference between the two. But they didn't probably evolve in response to humans who, who could come up with rhyming sayings to remember which one's poisonous. They evolved in response to other predators in their environment. And so we call this Batesian mimicry. And it comes from this guy right here. His name is Henry Bates. He actually worked with Alfred Wallace and went into the Amazon. And if you were a biologist back in the day, you were packing heat. You can see he has a gun here because he's pretty much shooting anything he can see. So he can collect those specimens, send them back to museums in Europe. And that's kind of the way to finance his trip. So he spent years and years in the Amazon doing that. But what he noticed is he'd have mimics. So you'd see two types of butterflies. They almost look exactly the same, but they're different. They're of different families. Or these ones look exactly the same but they're of different families. And in this case, one of them would be toxic. In other words, birds, when they'd eat it, it just tasted awful and they'd spit it right out. And the other one wasn't. And so it was gaining protection by mimicking that other uh, toxic or poisonous species. And then we have what's called Müllerian mimicry. It's named after Fritz Müller, who was a German naturalist. He also worked and moved to Brazil. And basically what he found is that that's one type of mimicry, but there's also genuine mimicry where they're all mimicking each other to get group protection. And so if you look at these things right here, like a yellow jacket or a bumblebee or a wasp or all of these the hornet over here, they all pretty much look the same. So they're all yellow with black bands. And why are they doing that? Well, they're gaining protection by having the same signal. In other words, you don't have to be bit by a bee and then a wasp and then a hornet to realize that yellow and, and those black stripes are, are bad. And so this is Mullerian mimicry, where they all gain protection from the same coloration. Um, when I was in, in um, elementary, I remember hearing the story of the monarch butterfly and the viceroy butterfly. And the story went that the monarch butterfly tasted incredibly bad or it was toxic to birds. If they'd eat one, they'd spit it right out. But the idea was that the viceroy wasn't and that birds could eat that. But they wouldn't because it was a mimic of the monarch. In other words, it was a Batesian mimic. We're showing Batesian mimicry. Um, nobody really got around to actually testing it. And what they found is that the viceroy is toxic as well. It tastes really bad to birds. And so now it'd be Malarian mimicry. They're both gaining protection between those two. And so aposematic coloration simply means stay away. Uh, it means I'm toxic, I'm dangerous, or I could be mimicking something that's toxic and dangerous. And I hope that's helpful.